Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless you, friends. The man of God is back. I apologize. You know, some places there's so much warfare against your broadcast. It must be because of the region I'm in. And it must be because of the word that I'm releasing. So I just had to end it because it was not making me flow. And the devil is a liar, so he likes to distract and to delay and to destroy. But anyways, we're not going to give him too much credit or too much attention. But because this word is so powerful, there was just too much in the atmosphere. So I need you to pray with me, friends. So pray with me because I guess the Lord wants a double take. Amen. The Lord wants a double take. So praise God. Comment below where you are watching from and just pray in the Holy Ghost. We cover this broadcast in the blood of Jesus. We cover this broadcast in the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. It might even be the internet here. Who knows? Praise God. But yes, tonight I'm ministering in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll be in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And there's going to be so much glory that we've already extended for week two for next week. So get ready for that. Amen. Help me to build the numbers and the algorithms up again, my friends. Glory to God. This is take two of the broadcast I want to release today. Glory. And I need a little bit of encouragement to just get back in the flow because I don't want to. I don't want to repeat myself, but I might have to just for the sake of first time viewers who are jumping on. Good to see you, friends. Good to see you, Tyler, my friend. Bless you. Melissa says, not hearing or seeing anything. I don't know what to say, friends. This just may not be the day. This may not be today. Who knows? If you see me and hear me well, just comment below, please. I need your help today. If you see me and hear me well. Yeah, maybe, maybe Facebook is just having issues, you know? I mean, because I'm telling you, all the IT realm, all the globalists, things are really shaking. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give us some hearts and likes, friends. Thank you, Lord. Right now, we plead the blood of Jesus. Right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Shatara Baba. Shatara Bata Tara Brata. Shatara Brata Tara Brata. You know what? I feel like the Lord is, is shifting what I want to talk about today because right now I believe we need to pray against the attack against your finances. We need to destroy the witchcraft against your wealth. And right now, we command the power of God, the blood of Jesus to come upon you and upon this broadcast because there is witchcraft against your wealth. What does that mean? That means if you don't take the jab, then you can't work. If you don't bow down to Nebuchadnezzar, to the one world order, to the antichrist system, then you cannot buy, you cannot sell. So there is witchcraft against your wealth. And the enemy wants you to, to remain poor because poverty is a spirit. And poverty many times is coincided with the spirit of witchcraft. And in fact, I'm here uh, staying at a casino, okay? I'm in Atlantic City. And of course, Atlantic City is like a Las Vegas next to uh, the ocean here. It's like a Las Vegas next to the ocean on the East Coast of New Jersey. And I'm staying here at the ocean, and it's a casino. And I sense that these principalities 
do not like me talking about this. So we're going to talk about this today because there's a witchcraft against wealth. And the enemy wants to keep you poor. In fact, someone say preach, Dr. Ben. In fact, remember the spirit of divination, the spirit of Python was all rooted and surrounded around money because they use divination for money. So what happened in the book of Ephesus in the book of Acts, when revival hit Ephesus, when revival hit that city, all of the people began to throw away their witchcraft books, their tarot card readings, their Harry Potter, their Wicca, their Ouija boards. They began to repent and throw away all of these false doctrines and all of these uh, books of Artemis and all of these books of Harry Potter. And what happened? The people got angry because it was circulated around money. So then what happened? Now there was a riot. Riots and revivals go hand in hand, right? Because the enemy loves money. The enemy, come on somebody, the devil is empowered by money. So what does the enemy do? The enemy steals, kills, and destroys, okay? The other day, one of my friends was talking about uh, stealing your thunder. And I said, listen, you can never steal my thunder because only the enemy steals. All right, you and I, we can never steal because we are not of the demonic realm. We are not born of an evil spirit. Can, I, can you say amen? So Shakaraba, we are in a season right now where the enemy is being exposed. And I declare and I decree right now, every hidden Jezebel, every hidden Judas, every hidden stealer of your anointing, stealer, leecher, anyone who's trying to back by and try to destroy is going to be exposed and will fall like Haman did on his very own gallows in the mighty name of it. So this is a season of exposure and extermination. But let's backtrack. If you're following me, say amen. You see right now there is witchcraft against wealth because money is power. Money is power. So there's witchcraft against wealth. And so the locust spirits, the canker worms, the palmer worms, these type of spiritual strongholds in the atmosphere will try to antagonize, steal, take away, deplete, destroy your financial harvest and gain. It's the same thing with wheat. Think about wheat. I mean, if you are a farmer, and whether you farm wheat, whether you farm different crops, if you're a farmer, there's different insects, bugs, natural calamity, famine. Whew. There's different natural elements, whether it's the sun, whether it's the snow or too much water, too much flooding, whether it's pesticides, chemicals. These bugs, these insects will try to eat your harvest and destroy your crops. It's the same thing in the financial realm. Can I go deep today? Come on, somebody. I need you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Because there's a transference of wealth that's taking place. Hallelujah. And everything is surrounding souls and financial harvest. Because we need financial harvest for the harvest of souls. Because we need money. We need finances for the harvest of souls. So everything is circulated around finances. And who here knows that even in this season that you cannot buy nor sell unless you bow down to Nebuchadnezzar, unless you have the mark of the beast. You cannot buy or sell unless you bow down to Nebuchadnezzar and you've taken the jab and the triple and quadruple booster until and unless you have the, the, the Jewish star or unless you are beginning to be identified as a Nazi. Who here knows that these are the days where God is about to mark you? And he's saying, the locust shall not touch you. The spirit of poverty shall not touch you. The wealth that God is bringing you will not be contaminated, will not be polluted or colluded, but it shall be surely given to you from the hand of God. You don't have to beg. You don't have to be a beggar. You don't have to be a slave. We don't worship money. We don't idolize money, all right? Amen. We don't love money, but the Lord is releasing the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. So even in the midst of the shakings, God is looking for those that he can trust. God is looking for those who can stand strong, stand tall, true to him and true to his word. I'm telling you right now, we're in a season where the things that you've sold is coming back. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters and in due time, it shall return to you. Amen. It's coming back to you in full. It's coming back to you in a greater measure, in a greater harvest. And we are in a season right now, 40 days 
of miracles. Someone say 40 days. From February 22nd, 222. From February 22nd, that began 40 days of Lent or 40 days of miracles up to Resurrection Sunday, up to Passover Sunday. Come on, somebody. God could have delivered the Jewish people. God could have delivered the Israelites. He could have delivered them quickly and swiftly from Egypt. But what was happening? There was greater recompense that was building up. There was greater revenue. There was greater payback. There was greater interest. Some would say interest. What happens when you go to the bank or what happens when you use your credit card? You use it. Now you have to pay back with an interest. Get ready for the enemy to release you from Egypt with an interest and you're going to leave Egypt, you're going to cross over, you're going to be released from the spirit of slavery and bondage to financial slavery, financial debt. You're going to be released by the hand of God and you're going to be released with interest. The Bible says sevenfold, when the enemy is caught with his hand in a cookie jar, he must pay back recompense sevenfold. Someone say seven. And literally, it could be more than sevenfold, but what does seven in Hebrew stand for? It stands for perfection, the perfect amount, the completed amount. Come on, somebody, which means the enemy must complete his payback. The devil, those who came against you, whatever was trying to attack your finances, your wealth, your health, must pay back sevenfold. So who's ready for the overflowing recompense in the mighty name of Jesus? If you're ready for that, shout hallelujah and say amen and amen. So today we're talking about the witchcraft against your wealth because there are many opposing spirits that do not want you to arise but let me tell you joseph arose david arose esther arose jesus arose there are many people that do not want you to arise because they are intimidated they are jealous it has to be about power and it has to do with influence and authority but there's a transference of wealth there is a transference, a storing up, a releasing of the hidden things, of the valuable things. The shoo, ruska. There is a release coming in the earth, in the body of Christ. That's why we're seeing the bank shut down. We're seeing the corporate level shut. I'm telling you, friends, the reason why, listen, I'm at a casino hotel right now, okay? And and no, I didn't go and play blackjack. I didn't go and play Texas. Uh, these are just the nicer hotels in this area. But even as I'm here, I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, these giants are about to fall. Every man-made institution, every man-made Asherah pole is about to fall, is about to come tumbling down. Hikarabata, every man-made bank, every globalist, uh, one world agenda, anti-Christ, WEF, World Economic Forum is about to be exposed and it's about to be exterminated and be released unto you. Do you know why? Because they are planning for another reset. They're planning for a greater reset. They're planning for a greater reset to destroy the American economy, to silence the church, to release martial law, to release greater control. But you know what? Shoo! If you and I, if we stand true, then guess what? The shaking is going to release inheritances, wealth. It's going to release destiny scrolls and souls to the kingdom of God. And God is looking. He's looking for the glory hubs, for the wineskins, for the humble shepherds, for the hidden ones. He's looking for those that are willing and saying, Jesus, here I am. Send me, use me. He's looking for those kedavasata, that are willing to take a stand to receive the greatest harvest of their lives in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, there's such a shift and a transference. There is a release of the things of God that are coming to you. If you believe it, say amen. I want you to share this on your wall, friends. Share this word on your wall right now in the name of Jesus. Because the witchcraft against your wealth is being destroyed. Can I go deeper here? Can I go deeper here? All right. So why is there witchcraft or opposition attack against your wealth? And what does wealth mean? Wealth does not necessarily mean money. Okay. What it means is your inheritance. It means your possessions. It means that the things you have, and the Bible says every single thing you have will be blessed. 
The Bible says your need basket, your womb, and your coming, and your going in the city, in the village, your family, your destiny, your future, in the day, in the night, in the afternoon, every single thing that you have will be blessed. Can I get an amen? But why are we talking about the warfare and the witchcraft against your wealth? Because the enemy is always trying to keep you poor in a spirit of poverty, in a spirit of debt, in a spirit of lack, so that you are not able to do what God has called you to do. So what does the enemy try to do? He tries to pollute, steal, kill, and destroy your wealth and resources, your possessions, your inheritances. What does that mean? He attacks, there's accidents, car accidents, your cars, your your uh, homes, things begin to go down under. There's shakara, there's literal accidents or there's uh, turmoil or things are going bad, things are going out, things are being destroyed, things are not working anymore. There's burglaries, vandalization. People are trying to steal, people are trying to burglarize and rob. There's a deterioration of the natural elements. But everything that you have shall be protected. Do you know why? Because the Bible says when they left Egypt, not even their tunic was worn out. Not even your clothes are going to get worn out. Not even the sandals that you walk on in the wilderness, in the valley, in the desert place will be worn out. Sharaban de Redosa. So there is witchcraft and warfare against your wealth. Because the enemy does not want you to prosper. The enemy wants you to be a slave. The devil wants you to be in bondage. The enemy wants you to constantly worry and to be a slave to money. Instead of being a slave to God, instead of being a slave, hallelujah, to the spirit of righteousness. So the enemy keeps you stuck in ruts and cycles. It might be medical, amen? The enemy wants cancer. The enemy inflicts stress, fear, worry, cancer, uh, hepatitis, diabetes, and you're constantly going to the doctor. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your energy. And now you cannot properly do the will of God. My goodness, I feel the power of God right now. I feel the, I need you to pray right now, friends. Shit about, because the wealth of the wicked is stored up for you. It is safan. It is hidden, concealed, revealed. But those who hide themselves in Jesus, God will reveal the secret things. He will release, unveil. Listen, I got goosebumps right now. I got chicken skin right now. He will release and reveal the hidden things, the hidden agendas to you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. So we're in a season right now, 40 days of miracles, but also a great transference of wealth. Great transference of wealth. And there are certain things that the enemy tries to unleash. Witchcraft and warfare against your wealth. Witchcraft and warfare against your wealth, okay? Let me give you, let me give you a few points right now where that witchcraft and that warfare against your wealth. And wealth, like I said, is not even about finances. It's about what you obtain and what you have and who you are. It's about, it's about who you are as a being. It's about your inheritance. And there's a few things I wanna talk about because number one, it could be generationally, okay? It could be generationally. There could be generational attacks, curses, patterns, spirits that are released to destroy your wealth, to take away your wealth. You're repeating patterns, you're uh, repeating mistakes. Uh, there's things that you're still struggling with that your father and mother struggle with, but sometimes it's generational. So God wants to destroy that generational warfare against your wealth. Number two, the second thing is regional. Because poverty can be regional, not just generational. Poverty can be regional. Now, can we go deeper? Maybe somewhere down the line, the occult or the Masonic or the mafia, that's why Chicago is always 
undergoing so much drama and trauma because of the Al Capone days of the covenants and the ties that were made with the demonic realm, right? That's why certain regions have more poverty than other regions. That's why certain regions have more prostitution or drug dealing or, or drug addictions, different issues in different regions and realms because of the blood ties, sacrifices that were made. So the Lord wants to break the witchcraft and warfare in the regions. So that regionally we'll have regions of prosperity, regions of hubs and regions and realms uh, of prosperity, life, Goshen, glory zones in the name of Jesus. So the second realm of witchcraft attack and warfare against your wealth is regionally. Number one is generationally. Now number two is regionally. All right, if you hear me, say amen. And I'm telling you, friends, today, I don't know if it's the region I'm in or if it's Facebook in general, but today seems to be the right day to release this word because there seems to be a lot of delay and hindrances, interference against this word. So y'all pray with me to finish this word, please. Amen. And then number three, the third realm of witchcraft, um, witchcraft warfare against your wealth. The third realm, number one is generationally, okay? Number two is regionally, all right? Number three, I would say uh, religiously, okay? Religiously. So the religious spirit, I mean, look at the Catholics, look at the Mormons. Uh, you know, look, look at some of these religious institutions, that hoard so much property and money. Come on, somebody. The Catholic Church says, listen, if you, uh, you know, if you, what's the right word? Help me, Lord. Shakaraba. You know, but anyways, so religious institutions, so the religious spirit will destroy your finances. The religious spirit preaches against finances, the law and the principle of sowing and reaping. But a religious spirit is witchcraft. A religious spirit is witchcraft. And a spirit of religion will choke out, because that's what Python and divination does, will choke out and will, will choke out. No, you guys, anyways. Well, a religious spirit will choke out your future, your destiny, and your wealth, the religious spirit. But when you are connected and committed and covered, you're sitting under a grace from a man, woman, a God. You're sitting under, you're connected to a prophetic anointing. Then you will prosper because the Bible says, believe in his prophets and you will prosper. So a religious spirit or religious institution is all about uh, is all about stealing from the people, fleecing God's flock, fleecing God's flock. What's that word? It's not propitiation. Uh, uh, Catholic. It's not. What's that word? You know, uh, they're not going to hell, but they're. What's that word? Somebody help me. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Winds of change. Winds of harvest. Angels of miracles. A purgatory. Thank you. Thank you so much. You see, the Catholic Church, you have to pay penitence to get out of purgatory. So these are lies within religious institutions to fleece the flock, to rape God's people to bewitch the people of God and to steal their inheritance and their plunder and put it under a denomination or put it under a an antichrist spirit. But you see, the wealth of the wicked is coming to you. And in midst of these shakings, there's angels of harvest. I'm telling you, I see it in the spirit right now. There are angels of harvest, angels of finance, angels of revival and awakening that are being released 
all across the earth right now. I'm telling you, it, the winds are blowing about 15, 20 miles per hour here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, in the East Coast. So in midst of these winds of change, there is a release of the angelic and the wealth of the wicked, the inheritance of the wicked, the possessions, the lands, the properties, the ideas are being released to you. If you're with me today, say amen. Now, my goodness, I feel like this broadcast is really making the enemy mad. What up? So Shandaraba, I want you to pray with me because I'm bringing this to a close. Can I get an amen? And like I said, there's witchcraft and warfare against your destiny. But the enemy is being destroyed and exterminated. And the fire of God is overturning every false decree, every attack and every lie in the name of Jesus. So somebody say fire. Every single thing that belongs to you will not be contaminated, but it will be blessed and it will prosper. Every single thing that your hands put to, it shall reap a hundredfold. So we are in a season of a transference of wealth. And what that verse means in Proverbs 13, 22, what that means is, Leaves an inheritance. The sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. What the word means in Hebrew is safan. And of course, safan means to hide, to conceal. God has stored up, God is hiding and concealing many gifts, treasures, blessings for you. And only those who truly knock and seek it will be open and it will be given. If you're with me today, say amen. Now I want to, I want to give you five things that there's a transference of, okay? And today, as we're here in Atlantic City, and I, I remember before I, I shut off the first one, the first broadcast, just take two now, double, double. But as I was speaking, I was sharing that Trump President Trump, he had a hotel here in Atlantic City. However, Atlantic City, of course, went, I mean, his uh, hotel went bankrupt and he had to file for bankruptcy, I believe, and he had to sell it. So there's something regionally here in Atlantic City. But even as I'm driving around Atlantic City, and I met with the pastors and the leaders here. They're hosting me tonight and tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'll be in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. So come and see me in Pennsylvania. Amen. For three days, my friends. But as I'm driving around, I felt this word and this impression from the Lord that these things are being transferred to God's people, these things. So once again, as they're shaking with the Silicon Valley Bank, shaking with the... Uh, with the economic structures and systems of the world, as they're shaking, come on somebody, as they're shaking with the Baal structures, the Molech structures, the Asherah worship structures, as there's a fire and a shaking, Rukata, there is a release of the things of God that are rightfully meant to be yours, that are rightfully meant to be the churches. Amen. Because you and I, we're meant to be the head, not the tail. We're meant to be the head and not the tail. We're meant to be above and not below. We're meant to be the giver and not the taker. We're meant to possess the gates of our enemies. If you're with me today, say amen. So as I was driving around today in Atlantic City, I felt sense that there was a transference of wealth. And the Lord is looking for the right people, places, hubs to receive them, to receive the prophetic grace, to receive the prophets. So there's a great shift, great change. We already know a great reset. And there's a great changing of the guards in the earth and in the church world. Hallelujah. But I saw this transference of wealth and I declare over you now, nothing will stop this transference of wealth. Nothing. No warfare, no witchcraft will stop the transference of the wealth from the wicked to the righteous. And even as I said, we're 40 days of miracles. 
at the end of 40 days, which is Passover, Resurrection Sunday, the Israelites left Egypt with sevenfold over. So we're in a season right now where your recompense is being built up. God is building up your revenue, building up your interest. There is a building up of what should be paid back to you and given back to you sevenfold or so we are in 40 days of miracles. So I'll say 40 days of miracles. But as I was driving today, the Lord said, transference of wealth. So I said, okay, Lord. And here's five things. Someone say amen. I'm going to give you five things right now. If you're ready to take notes, say hallelujah. Here's five things that are being transferred from the wicked that are safan, that are concealed, hidden, stored up, that are reserved for you. Five things that are being given, released, revealed, transferred to you in Jesus' name. If you're ready to receive, say amen. Number one, the first realm of transference is influence. Influence. There's a realm of promotion and greater metron sphere of influence that the enemy is holding back. The devil is afraid of your expansion. Remember, I talked about three levels of warfare. Generationally, regionally, and religiously, okay? And in these three realms of warfare, the enemy does not want your influence to expand. The religious spirit of Saul did not want David to expand. The religious spirit of Joseph's brothers, even generationally, did not want Joseph to expand. So there is a an operational witchcraft warfare against your increase and against your warfare. But I declare now that the influence that is designated to you and to your ministry, to your business, to your mantle is coming. And remember, influence is given and entrusted. So God has entrusted and uh, entrusted and given you influence for the sake of the kingdom of the gospel. Some say preach, Dr. Ben. However, when this happens, it destroys the kingdom of darkness because the more light shines, the more the darkness dissipates. The movie, Jesus Revolution, the movie, come out in Jesus' name, amen. The more Jesus is broadcasted, the less and less the devil is glorified and magnified. We must lift up the name of Jesus. Someone say amen. So number one, the first realm or area of transference from the wealth of the wicked to you is influence. God is rightfully giving you the seat position that belongs to you. If you receive it, say amen. Number two, the second realm of transference is finances, okay? There is a transference of finances. Give me some hearts and likes, people of God. There is a realm of finances that's being transferred. And finances could be physical money, fiat, currency, paper, money. Or finances can be properties. It can be wealth. It can be land. It can be businesses. So the Lord is the owner of a cattle of a thousand hills, a, th a cattle on a thousand hills. He is the one who gives the talents to those who are entrusted. So there are, there's a financial wealth, there's a glory, there's an inheritance that's being released. And I saw names being transferred on the deeds. I saw a passing of batons. I saw inheritances, plots of land, uh, lawsuits, uh, settlements. I saw th your name on written paper, written down on paper, but there's going to be a transference of wealth that's coming to the body of Christ, that's coming to the church, that's coming to you. So number one is influence, which is in a sense, the power or the anointing the grace that God bestows upon you. And number two is finances because the Bible says he gives you power to create wealth. He gives you power to create wealth. So number two is finances. So I saw transference of finance. Number three, the third realm of transference. God is taking from the wicked and giving to you from those in sin and evil witchcraft to you. The third realm is ideas and blueprints. Ideas and blueprints. Someone say, preach Dr. Ben. The third realm is ideas and blueprints. 
And what does this mean? That means that there are certain ideas, visions that belong to the children of God. However, we have forfeited them and we've given them up to the enemy and to the people of the world because we as believers lack faith. Because we have believers, we're in doubt, we're lazy, we're poor, we're broke. Uh, we don't have high level excellency uh, of, uh, of execution like a lot of the people in the world does. So what happens? We gave up to the enemy, to the world. But those ideas and blueprints are being transferred back to the church. Who here knows that one idea can save, uh, can save world hunger? One idea can destroy human trafficking. One idea can cause you to be a multimillionaire. One idea, it's the power of one. It's the power of revelation. And what that word ideas and, revel and blueprints is revelation. That's why Apostle Paul prayed for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because we move at the speed of revelation. And there's many times opposing opposition spirits generationally, regionally, or religiously that blocks that spirit of revelation to come upon you. Glory to God. Because revelation is a currency. Revelation is your currency. Number four, the fourth realm that God is opening up doors for and transferring from the wicked to you. The fourth realm is access to regions and places. Some devils have occupied seats of power and influence for way too long, like Hollywood. But Hollywood is truly turning into Hollywood. And Jesus is truly being glorified in the screens, the theaters, and in social media. So we are seeing regions and places that have been occupied in, in the high tops of the mountains, they're being overturned. These evil demonic principalities of witchcraft and Jezebel Ahab spirits are being dethroned. And God is raising up the Esthers and the Mordecais. Amen. So we see there's a transference from the wicked to the righteous. Access to regions and places. The enemy specifically and strategically tries to close doors against your life. Even through the church, gossip, slander, jealousy, competition. Look at Azusa Street Revival. In the days of Azusa Street Revival, people began to get jealous. So they stole the mailing list. Because that is how the Azusa Street Revival continues to spread out because they would write magazine articles, newspaper articles, and they had a whole mailing list of different churches and people and it would get sent out. But somebody who was jealous stole that mailing list. So therefore, the revival fire could not be spread through news or magazine any longer. But God is about to open up doors. Regions that were out of your access are about to open up for you. Places that belong to you. Places, hear me now. Some of the places that crucified the prophets will have the greatest inheritance in Jesus' name. The places that most rejected you will give you the greatest harvest. The places that most uh, defiled you, destroyed you, assassinated your name and your character, it's those places that will have to release recompense to you, the greatest in the mighty name of Jesus, if you receive and I believe a shah hallelujah. Because this is a season of a transference of wealth, transference of power, of influence, revelation, ideas, blueprints, and even access to regions and places. What happened during COVID, during Corona Bologna? What happened? A lot of buildings closed down and they would not give churches access. The devil is a liar. 
We're not going to bow down to the jab. We're not going to bow down to the tyranny, to the false narrative. We're not going to stand in fear, but we're going to stand up and rise up. We're going to gather in the mighty name of Jesus because this is a season where regions and places, doors are opening right now in the mighty name of Jesus because I'm a child of God. And as a priest, we have access to all different realms and places. We have access to walk amongst the people as the Lord leads. Someone say amen. Someone say it's coming. The Bible says the nations belong to you. The nations. Psalms 2 eight. ask of me and I will give you the nations and the end of the earth as your inheritance, as your possession. Ask the Lord. Hallelujah. It's yours. He's giving you access. He's giving you open doors. Hallelujah. To be an ambassador of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And I prophesy now, unusual doors, unusual opportunities. People of God, I'm ministering on a cruise ship at the end of this year. In the month of November, I'm ministering on the biggest and newest cruise ship on planet Earth. Unusual doors of favor are about to open. Places that blocked you, rejected you, that pushed away the gospel, they are your portion. If you believe the same, amen. And now number five, the fifth realm of transference. Someone say number five. The fifth realm of transference is souls. Souls. There's going to be a great billion soul harvest. Bob Jones and the Kansas City prophets had prophesied about this many years ago. But there's a billion soul harvest that's being delivered from the kingdom of darkness and being brought up into the kingdom of light. It's gonna happen suddenly. It's gonna happen quickly. I'm telling you friends, there is a transference of souls. Gen Z, the homosexuals, transgenders, uh, those who are in witchcraft, in confusion, those that are bound, these people, these souls are going to come sweeping, running into the kingdom of God. We are in the days of great harvest. And I'm telling you, friends, hear me now. In these end times, in these days, the sign of the transference of wealth is that there's a transference of souls, that people are being delivered and are coming to the kingdom of God by swarms, by numbers, by, by myriads and myriads. We're going to see a wave, a tsunami wave of souls and nations coming unto the glory of God. Rabata, and I prophesy, I declare, I decree that souls are coming into the kingdom. So you better get ready. You better prepare your nets. You better prepare your harvest nets, my friend. Because this is a season where fish are jumping in. Souls are coming in. The hungry are coming in. Hallelujah. So that is the fifth realm of transference that I see that's happening. Souls. Souls. It's revival season. It is awakening. It's revival season, my friends. There is a hunger all across the earth and souls, young people, old people, generations, poor people, rich people. There are souls coming into the kingdom of God and they're being swept in by families, by units, by myriads upon myriads in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. Five realms of transference from the wicked to the righteous to you. Number one, influence, power, grace. Number two, ideas and blueprints, revelation. Number three, finances, possession, inheritance. Number three, access to regions and places. And number five, souls and people. Who's ready, friends? My goodness, I feel the Holy. Can we just pray and lift up our hands? We did it, friends. I feel like I'm crossing a marathon because... This is my second broadcast in a row, back to back, because the first one was, there was just too much attack against it, but just pray the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. The anointing is breaking the yoke. The back of the devourer, the back of the locust, the back of of the worm, the canker worm, palmer worm. Someone say transference. Lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you. 
Release it to your children today, Lord, these faithful, humble servants. I pray that you would find us pleasing in your sight. Wow, I just heard the Lord say, get ready for a boatload. God is literally going to dump. <laughs> He's literally going to dump a boatload, a cargo load of blessings. There is going to be an overflow, a overhaul of the blessings of God. Jesus. Come on, I want you to pray in the mighty name of Jesus right now. If someone wrote down the notes of the five realms, can you just paste it here? Praise God. Just paste it in the comment. Good to see Apostle Pamela. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody say breakthrough. There's breakthrough happening in the name of Jesus. There's a transference of wealth in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And I declare and I decree in these 40 days of miracles from 222 February 22nd all the way to Passover Resurrection Sunday. We are in 40 days of miracles, my friends. 40 days of miracles. Glory to God. Shirabata Tarabrata. Come on, that's right. Pray in the Holy Ghost, friends. Pray in the Spirit right now. There are angels being released. And the Spirit of the Lord says, even as the winds are blowing and howling, this stands for the winds of change and for the winds of the ministering spirits of God being released all across the earth to bring up, to raise up, to take up in midst of the shaking and in midst of the breaking. Thank you, Lord. Good to see you, Abilene. Glory, help me to break 200 pe today, people. So happy that we're breaking numbers today. Glory be to God. Father in heaven. Like I said, tonight I'm ministering in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And then tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll be ministering in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Glory be to God. Thank you. Pak Sung. Thank you, Lord. Some of say, breathe upon me, a fresh spirit of God. Breathe upon me, a fresh, O oh Lord. Every witchcraft and warfare against your wealth and your destiny is destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name. My goodness. I don't know if you can feel it or see it, but there's an angel right here. There's an angel, my goodness. There's an angel of harvest right here. Glory be to God. Now this may trip some of you out as 444 in the East Coast right now. This might cause some of you to say, what you talking about, Willis? But I could discern in the spirit an angel of harvest is standing behind me. Shh. Glory. <sighs> Jesus, I don't know if you could see my, my goodness, even as I declare that, there is an angel of harvest being released. Jesus. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. He's releasing and overturning. He's overturning. He's overturning in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Ziba Karabrosa Tarabrata Tashata. Jikanda Rabosa Tarabrata Tarabrata. 
Zira banda de rosa tara brata basha ta. Thank you, Lord. In midst of the shaking and breaking, there is a transference and a release. Even in midst, and hear me now, friends, we are in the beginning of the economic collapse. We're still in the beginning. I mean, we're probably going to be feeling the effects of it for the next two, three years at least. But as the body of Christ, it will not touch you. It will not affect you. Amen. And that's what we need to stand on. But we need to prepare now and get ready. As I've been speaking about for many months now. But the Silicon Valley Bank and a number of banks that are going down under bankrupt right now, declaring bankruptcy. It's just the beginning of the economic collapse and downfall. And as it goes down, so will the ITs. Many, many to kill a parson. The writing is on the wall. The finger and the hand of God is against you, O Antichrist spirit and system. So many, many to kill a parson. So we are in a season right now where many things are being judged and many things are about to fall and crash. And we are going to see almost like a free for all, like a chaotic grab what you can free for all, like a hoarding spirit that's going to manifest soon in the United States. However, the Lord is... The Lord says, don't worry. Amen. Because the wealth of the wicked will be yours. It will be yours. So get ready to receive that, friends. If you're ready to receive that, say amen. Glory be to God. Now, listen, I want to pray for you. If you received from the Lord today and from his servant today, say amen. I'm so glad we, we broke through. Okay, because the first broadcast had a lot of weird warfare against it. So I had to end it and here we are. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray, hallelujah, that in this great transference and in this great release, that you and I will be found by the eyes of God as those he can trust and entrust. Because the Bible says, that the one who has will be given more. And the one who thinks he has, it will be taken from him and given to the one who has. And that's talking about the parable of the talents. So the Lord is about to give those that are faithful the hidden things and give those that have been sowing and Giving, the Lord is going to reward and honor publicly in Jesus' name. So get ready for the transference, friends. So I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you right now for the glory of God and that we move, live, and operate from the currency of heaven, the currency of heaven. And Father, I thank you that your children, we will never be in lack. And that we will thrive. And that we will position ourselves and get ready for what you are about to do in this season, my Lord. So thank you for what you're doing across the earth. And thank you for that realm of protection, provision, and that realm of promotion. So Father, I thank you for what you're doing and for the glory of God that will be revealed and released. And that every single thing that belongs to me and to my family, this ministry, it will be given. Men will give unto your bosom, says God. Men will give unto your bosom. In fact, they will lay it down at the feet of the apostles. They will literally throw it at you, throw it at your feet. Favor will come chasing you down. Favor will come knocking down on your door. It will literally come before you. It is your portion. Hallelujah. It is your portion. So if you receive this, if you're blessed by this today, say amen. 
Now, friends, thanks for watching. Share this broadcast if you're blessed today. Praise God, we finally broke the 200 number. Praise God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But share this broadcast if you're blessed by it. 40 days of miracles, my friends. And like I said, tonight I'm ministering in New Jersey and Atlantic City. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll be ministering in Pennsylvania, Lebanon, Pennsylvania. So come and see me, friends. We have over 800 registrations right now. Come on. Or I think 700 or 800. Uh, and then next week, I'm coming back to the East Coast because I feel revival, fire, glory ready here in the East Coast. And then after that, I'm going to be in Hawaii. I will be in Hawaii with Dr. Roberts Lairdon. Uh, and we are going to do two intensives. One in Oahu and one in Hilo, Hawaii. And that's going to be from March 28th to April 1st. March 28th to April 1st. So, hey, do you need a vacation to Hawaii? I think you do. You look like you need a getaway, a glory getaway. So consider joining us in Hawaii. If you're in the East Coast, see me this week or even next week. Praise God. And consider seeing me in Hawaii because it will be a blessed, blessed. You could even register online. Myself, Dr. Roberts Lairdon. Dr. Roberts is, of course, the author of God's Generals. And he is a general himself. Who you knows, again, these impartations, there's a transference coming about right now. So we need to get into glory, position ourselves, and get ready to receive. Because these are the days of great shift and transition. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, friends of God, if you were blessed today, I want to ask you, give us a follow, give us a like, subscribe, and uh, do share this broadcast today, amen. Thanks for all the love and all the prayers. If you were blessed today, I wanna to open up a time for you to sow, praise God, before we end the broadcast. As we're in this atmosphere, in this glory, in this anointing, I wanna open up an opportunity for you to sow, praise God. Now, as you sow, I want you to say recompense because I believe there is recompense, there's payback that's coming to you, that is coming to the church, amen? That's coming to you. If you believe it, say amen. So I'm gonna, t I'm gonna pin the ways you can give, praise God. I'm gonna pin the ways that you can give here. Glory to God. Shitanamata Tarabrata. But if you want to sow, I want you to just comment recompense because I fully believe there's a realm of recompense. There's a paying back anointing coming to you in these five realms, in these five areas. So bless the Lord, bless the servant, bless the ministry so into this atmosphere, amen, and be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Shatanamata. Shatanamata. Thank you, Lord. Shatanamandero Sata. Go ahead and sow, my friends, sow, people of God, sow into the glory. Sow as you feel led to do so. If you were blessed by this word, by the anointing that's present in this broadcast today, consider sowing, amen? And giving back to the work of the Lord. Giving back to the kingdom, for it shall return to you. It shall come back to you. Praise God. Abilene, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Melissa. Yes, Stacy, as you click on the ways, it's all there. Providence Ivana. Sherry, Surat Bean, Carolyn Ward. Providence Alana, Tiffany Johnson, Keisha Tanya, Myrna Alvarez. Mm. 
Mandere skora bruta basha tarabra. Yeah, great transference, my friends. Yolanda, bless you. I'm telling you, our church family are some of the most earnest people who give and so all the time. You know them by their fruit. You know them by their fruit. Mandare babo sata. As he's so in this atmosphere, that's right. Karen, Tom, bless you. Jennifer, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Shaka rabasi taraba. Jujuan. Jujuan day. Prophet Luis. Glory. Terry D. McKee, Dr. Angela. Shandarabata Teda Brata Tarabrata Ta. Thank you, Lord. We're going to open up for another minute for you to sow in the presence and the glory of God. Child of Most High. Thank you, Lord. But we did it. There was a lot of warfare against this broadcast. The devil is a liar, but we did it. Mapule Mildred. Shatarararabota. Thank you, Lord. Rebe sitarabasha tabas karabro tabasha ta. Ziban darabosa tarabrata ta. Yeah, we did it. Amen, Carolyn. We did it. <laughs> Vanessa, bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every act of injustice will be reversed and overturned. Hallelujah. Shout out, man. Well, friends, thanks for jumping on today. Like I said, today, we got somebody from Bahrain. God bless you, Martha, from Bahrain. Today, I will be ministering in a few hours, actually. <laughs> Ingrid, God bless you. I'll be ministering in Atlantic City and then... I'll be ministering in Lebanon, Pennsylvania tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. And even next week, we're coming back for a double-double for a second take. Amen. So come and see me. Come and see us. It's going to be a life-changing time. I guarantee it. God bless you, friends. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for all the love from South Africa. Amen, amen, and amen. Bless you, friends. We'll see you soon.